Weightlifting and strength training are really important, especially as you get older, because as we're going to talk about today, a new study suggests that weakness actually leads to the acceleration of biologic aging. This is a really interesting analysis, one of many different papers that we've talked about over the years, highlighting the importance of grip strength and gait speed and other proxies linked with frailty. But the investigators looked at four markers of biologic aging or the pace of biologic aging that looks at epigenetic signatures within one's cells. And the one that was statistically significantly linked with frailty is known as the Dunedin Poem 38. There's also the Horvath clock and the Levine clock, and there's all these methylation clocks. But let's get into this study and talk a little bit more about the details. The title of this study is Association Between Frailty Index and Epigenetic Aging Acceleration in Older Adults, Evidence from the Health and Retirement Study. So this is an ongoing cohort that is trying to ascertain associations with lifestyle, diet, mental health, education status, and frailty as it is correlated with pace of biologic aging. So again, you hear people say, well, I'm only 55, or I'm 64, or I'm 40, like in my case, 42. But we know that one's chronologic age can be different from one's biologic age. And these three aforementioned tests that I mentioned, particularly the Dunedin POAM38 test that looks at the pace of methylation, and this is, of course, from the Dunedin study that's this ongoing study that looked at facial age and mental status and perceived rate of aging or pace of aging and, and mental health and all this. Uh, and uh, these individuals created this algorithm that predictably and reliably will ascertain the pace of one's biologic age. And in some cases, that is different, either accelerated like some people can be 40, but biologically 45 or decelerated. And so this is why, of course, Brian Johnson is very popular because he is aging purportedly much slower than most individuals. But what I think is really important here, and they found that an accelerated pace of biologic aging is linked with a 20% increase odds of having being frail. And again, what are the, the proxies associated with frailty? Low gait speed. So you see elderly people sometimes walk really slow and robotic-like. So if someone cannot walk quickly, that's because often their balance, and it could be a neurologic issue or it could be a musculoskeletal strength issue. Like they don't have the strength to prevent them from falling. A low grip strength. So we've talked a lot about grip strength and its independent associations with all sorts of conditions, diseases, as well as all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality. So grip strength is important. Now, let me just pause here. I see a lot of people training for grip strength by doing dead hangs and things like that. I think the best thing that you can do for grip strength is farmer's carries and deadlifts. So I don't really suggest sitting there and hanging on a bar, although that can be helpful in certain contexts, but you're going to increase your grip strength by doing farmer's carries and deadlifts and full body resistance exercise splits. If you want to figure out what is a good full body exercise split for someone and let's say you squat 135 pounds, you deadlift 200 pounds, and you can bench press 185 pounds. So you can just go into chat GPT and tell them your numbers, your body mass, you know, your strength, and say, give me a full body split routine. Of course, it's best to work with a personal trainer, but for those of you that are wondering, like, what exercises can I do? Honestly, I think at this point, ChatGPT is doing a great job with programming, as embarrassing as that is to say. So a full body split routine is gonna be beneficial. Now, getting into the strong association, as the study found, with frailty and accelerated cellular aging, this is the most important quote of this paper. The investigators say there was a strong statistical association with frailty and cellular aging acceleration. So the weaker one is, the faster they will age, biologically speaking. Now, I think this is important. However, there could be a reverse hypothesis here, a reverse causality. The investigators say an alternative hypothesis posits that rather than aging biology preceding frailty, there may be a reverse causation mechanism in which alterations in frailty or other phenotypes precipitate changes in DNA methylation. There was a lot of multisyllabic words there, so let's break that down. Essentially, they suggest that getting weaker may precede the accelerated aging phenomenon. And so we don't get have large randomized studies with multiple uh, individuals over a long period of time. These studies are shorter follow-up periods, you know, four years, six years, five years, etc. This study happened to be just four years. But I think this 
a reverse causation mechanism likely holds true. Because what happens when someone becomes frail? How do we become frail? How do we lose muscle mass? How do we lose grip strength? How do we lose gait speed? By being sedentary. We know that sedentary behaviors are inherently more inflammatory. Sitting is more inflammatory than, say, you know, exercising and walking. You know, part of the reasons why people might not exercise, they don't have the energy because they're eating hyperpalatable, ultra-processed junk food, and they have blood sugar imbalances, and so they're sedentary, etc. So uh, this makes a lot more sense to me. And we know that exercise has all sorts of anti-inflammatory properties and can initiate DNA repair and affect methylation. So this is really interesting that the investigators are suggesting that it might be that becoming weaker actually accelerates biologic aging. But either way, we have a strong statistical association to suggest that if you become weak, frail, low grip strength, low gait speed, you start to lose uh, strength and body size, that will cause you to age prematurely. Now, it's also likely that the process of becoming weaker um, actually precipitates the changes in the DNA. And so in brief, these findings are comparable to other previously published studies. For example, the Canadian Longitudinal Aging Study found that higher grim age was significantly correlated with changes in frailty over three years and beyond. And so there's all sorts of statistical associations. And essentially, this video is to remind you that even if you're in your 60s or your 70s, you should participate in full body resistance training programs. This can be body weight, this can be air squats, hip hinges, hip thrusts, pull-ups, presses, all these things are very important. So I wanted to share with you this particular study so that you can share this with your friends and family who are in their 50s, 60s and beyond and who only walk or who only do hiking or things like that, tennis and all that, that is amazing. But we also have to embark on resistance training protocols. So uh, I'll put links for some resources for you in the description below. Creatine is very helpful, especially as you get older or don't eat ample red meat. And I can link also the glute masterclass with myself and Erica Grisanti if you want to learn lower body exercises that are particularly important for improving and optimizing strength of your lower body. So that's it for today, friends. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.